yeah, we had a good time. Uh, got everything done. Killed the boss. Uh, I got the sword. I got the, uh, legendary or epic one-handed sword. The raid was all together, and so, like, I couldn't stream it at the time. I beat McConnell in damage, because he sucks. Yeah, McConnell sucks. But, you know, it's like, what else is new? As expected, yeah, it's just the way it is. But, yeah, what'd you do differently? I just played the game better than him. So, yeah, 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 after a nerf? Oh, yeah, oh, no, we beat it after the nerf. We went in there, we killed it in two tries. It was no big deal. Yeah, it was nerfed today? It was. It was like... It wasn't nerfed today, bro. It was gutted. Like, they literally, like, fucking... I mean, to be fair, I still think that groups are going to struggle on this boss. And, like, that's what's so crazy about it. Uh, I'll go ahead. I'll pull this up and show it to you guys. Because, like, again, that uh, a lot of people really, really, really overestimate the average classic Andy. I mean, these people, like... Like, these people made me stop expecting other people while they, like... Classic WoW by itself reduced my faith in humanity more than TikTok did, more than Vine, more than Twitter, even more than Instagram. Because if you go and you watch classic players, you tell them to go left and they don't go right, they just jump. It's like, why would you do that? But that's what classic Andes do. So Sunken Temple got hotfixed, bosses health nerfed by almost 50%. Look at this. So, Acranius nerfed from 4 million. You've got to keep in mind, it was at 4 million. And now it's down to 1.4 million. So, they cut this thing down by over half. That is nuts. That's not 50%. That's like 60%. That's crazy. Yeah, it got tested. Yeah, of course, this got tested by the average player base. Of course. Changes are a little overboard, but the raid feels good. I feel like there's a lot of people that probably progged on Acranius and think it's pretty easy now after the changes, and that's because you probably put four hours testing the boss, right? I think that, like, uh, for an average average group, average groups are still going to struggle with this boss. I guarantee you. Like, just l let's go ahead and let's wait for, like, a, a month or so, and we'll see what's going to happen. I bet this won't even be the last nerf. People did complain a little too early, don't you think? No, I don't think so at all. Uh, I think that if you go and you look at the average, like look at what is 50th percentile DPS in one month, and you're going to have the 50th percentile for average players be less than the DPS that people are doing on the first day of the phase. That's the truth. You look at the world first group and you look at what their damage is, their damage is fucking insane. And I think that people really underestimate how good a lot of the players in Classic are. It's clearly broken. Yeah, it's clearly fucking broken. They need to just play their fucking game. Yeah, that would be nice, but, you know, you can't expect everything, right? I mean, that's... Oh, that's a lot. And so, yeah. Anyway, so Sunken Temple got hotfixed. They nerfed the last two bosses' health pool. Okay, so then uh, Shade of Acranus. So apparently it's not just the last boss, it's also other bosses. Overall difficulty is on par with Gnomergon now. Mo mechanics are more fun, though. I like the theme better. I'd say they overshot the nerf on Acranius, but pretty good. Yeah, I think that, again, a lot of people were... Um, I, I think a lot of people kind of... Y you know, like, if you're, if you're a classic WoW Reddit poster, you're not really the average player, are you? Uh, I think the average player is still going to struggle with Acranius. Like, they definitely will. They didn't nerf uh, Incursions yet? Yeah, they did. They did nerf Incursions. How much health should the boss get? Spend the wheel? Yeah, I don't know why they did this. It was so weird. The nerf total, I think, would be 180%. Well, of course it's not 80%. 75% would be 1 million because it started at 4 and it was 1.4. So it's more like 60. But, um, you know, 60% is also huge. 4 million seems a bit crazy to start. Yeah. Why won't? Why should they? People won't stop playing because of this? Just keep half-assing it and collecting full subs? Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, why test the game if people are going to do the job for you? It's a good point. And uh, LFM must show pre-nerf logs. Oh, boy. And uh, I'm okay with this. It means it's easier to gear alts. Thank goodness desire to raid has increased. Th they may have over-nerfed the Cranus, minor HP nerf, and a scale bane nerf. I think Pugs would have done fine. I really don't think so. As I said, as somebody who's watched classic WoW players... That's it. Average guilds and pugs will struggle. In my opinion, Cranius health should have changed. Uh, just nerf the scale banes a bit. The Cranius HP shouldn't have changed. Well, of course it should have. I mean, like, you're not going to expect... This is the thing, right? 
is that if you have a boss that has almost 3 million health, you're going to have... So, like, you have, like, multiple points of failure there. Yeah, healers are going to go out of mana. It's just too hard, man. It's too hard. And it's not too hard for the best groups, but it is too hard for the uh, the average ones, right? Yeah, that's it. No one wants to do a 15-minute fight like that? Yeah, it's fucking boring. And so, yeah, just make an interesting fight that's not super long, and then that's it. I mean, shit. It's that simple. You think Blizzard have done this on purpose to get streamers making content on this? No, I think they just fucked up on accident. Uh, that's my honest opinion. But yeah, you can see some people uh, that, that have these opinions, right, where uh, it's okay for raids to take a couple of lockouts to clear the first time. Um, I think that these people really don't understand how good the average, like the, the, the people that were playing the raids are. Uh, I think this is the problem that like a lot of classic WoW players have is that classic WoW players, I don't think they respect the skill level of people that really understand the game. And I think a good example of this is whenever we did the Mock Raw tournament and people thought the reason why Snuts and Zico made it to the finals is because they had their guild mates and their viewers giving them flasks. These are people who think that the difference between th between them and Snuts is a flask. It's a few enchants on a piece of gear. So this is the problem that really happens, is that classic WoW players overestimate their skill level to such a dramatic degree that they don't even really understand what happened. The truth is that if you go and you look at Sunken, Temple, Ecranius, uh, World First, okay? We're not really looking at anything. We're not watching the fight. I just want to show the DPS. So you have people doing 700 DPS. I can guarantee you that if you go at 50th percentile DPS in one month from now, it will probably be under six to 700 for most classes. So even one month from now, whenever people get all of the gear, they still won't be able to perform and play at the level that these guys are able to play at with the gear from the last season. That's the truth. What these guys don't understand is that whenever you see, oh, raids taking a couple of lockouts, if it takes a couple of lockouts for the best players to be able to do it, that means that the average player is never going to do it. It's just not going to happen. Because they're never going to get enough gear to where they can overcome that skill difference. And I think this is, again, it's like, you know, the difference between, you know, these guys and them is, oh, they had a world buff. No, that's not the difference. These guys are, like, way better than you. And so classic WoW players, I think, vastly overestimate their skill in the game. And they don't understand that, like, the average player is not going to do this kind of stuff. And I think that also a lot of the people that are complaining about, uh, I do wish that, like, for people like this, for example, I wish that this was on the Blizzard forums so you could inspect their uh, their WoW character and look it up and see what their parses are. Because I bet that a lot of the people that are talking about how it's good for the raids to take this long haven't done the raid. Uh, or if they have done the raid, they've done it, like, once or twice. Or, on the other side, they've probably done it and, you know, they're super fucking sweaty. They've been playing the game for 15 years, and so, of course, it's easy for them. Yeah, but Nodar Insane? Well, none of the above. That's what I'm saying. That's the guild. Uh, I, that's my whole point that I'm making. The point that I'm making is that the guild that can do this on week one will be better in coordination, damage, and output in general than a pug that will ever do this until the next season comes out or the next phase comes out like average pugs whenever this comes out look at these guys they're doing 800 dps in one month from now with full bis gear outside of drops from this boss you're going to have the 50th percentile dps for kills on the boss probably be below that that's what it is. You know, pugs will never go with their fi over 500 DPS. Exactly. And that's that's okay. And so, like, the reason why, like, I, I think these guys don't really understand that these problems won't be solved with gear. Because also the gear difference isn't that big. Like, you're not going to see people double their damage in, like, this season and in, in this phase of the game. You're going to see, like, maybe, like, a 10 to 20% increase. So it's not going to be like some crazy massive buff that is just going to make you be able to steamroll the raids. But it'll make it easier, but it's not going to make it a joke. So yeah, this was... And also another big factor here is uh, Blizzard removed Thrash. Now, for anybody who doesn't understand what Thrash is, 
basically what happens is whenever a boss does a melee attack, there's a chance that it will do a second or even a third melee attack. Why does this happen? Because fuck you, that's why. And the ability is called Thrash. And what Thrash did is it's basically just a tank check. Uh, there's no way that you can outskill this. It is a simple, raw gear check. And what ended up happening with a lot of groups, and this is what happened with mine, and I'm sure it happened with a lot of other people's, is their tanks were literally getting one shot. Their tanks were getting killed in literally one, one hit. And that was it. And so Blizzard got rid of that. And now the boss can no longer thrash. Now, this might be an unpopular opinion because Classic WoW is Classic WoW and people like it to be the same. But Thrash has always been a dog shit, unfun RNG mechanic that should have never existed. There is no reason to have it. And the only time a boss should, should build up Thrash stacks is whenever it's being kited. That's the only time. RNG death is stupid? It is. Well, the thing is that, in general, there should be counterplay to something. And if the only counterplay to something is just simply to outgear it, because if you... So each boss has like a, like, let's say a two second, maybe because like, I know we've got like a lot of attack speed reductions, right? And, uh, you know, at 60, you're going to have like Thunder Fury 2, which does that. Uh, so like each boss is having like an attack swing speed of about 2.5 seconds, three seconds. So if the boss can, if the boss can thrash and hit you three times at the same time, you have to gear your tank in order for it to be able to take three hits consecutively without dying. So what does that mean that you need to do? That means that you need to gear enough to where your tank can just sit there without getting healed for like eight seconds. Now, this is my opinion, but I think that gameplay kind of sucks. I'm going to be honest. I think this kind of, I think this is kind of shitty gameplay. And so the, the solution to mechanic is boring. Yes, exactly. And also, well, what I'm saying is that if you create a mechanic like Thrash, what ends up happening is that you have to make the rest of the game really easy. Because if the game isn't really easy and tank damage is already really high, then Thrash will make the game unplayable. It's a gear check, and that's what I'm saying, right? But like this type of gear check makes it to where you overgear the boss to the extent that the actual gameplay isn't entertaining. So I think they should get rid of Thrash. I think it's a bad mechanic. Make the bosses do more damage. That's what they should do instead. Yeah, it's shit. It's a bad way of a gear check. It just fears new players. Well, it's also not communicated well. Like, there's no real reason. Like, for example, like with a, a crushing blow, you can get more defense. Or you can, uh, yeah, you basically get more defense. And so that lowers your chance of getting hit by a crushing blow. Getting critically hit, you get more defense, you get more avoidance, that lowers your chance of having that happen. Thrash, there's no way that you can actually... You can't counter this. There's no workaround for it. There's no counterplay to it. It's just that this happens and you die. That's not very good gameplay. It's really not. Now, for original classic, it didn't really matter because the game was so easy. Who cares? But whenever you get into a more challenging fight like Acranius, then you start to see the cracks uh, begin to show. And you get to see like these mechanics that are, you know, very old mechanics, etc., you get to see them basically not not function the way they should. Is Thrash never the boss stacks up and attacks because they can't hit you or something like that? That is sometimes when it happens, but it also happens on its own, even whenever the boss can hit you. Thrash made sense in a time where gamers and developers were dumber? Yeah, sure. And, and like, again, it, it's just that nowadays, I think people can design things in a better way. It's like the Reddit post of the guy's dad who played Hardcore Diablo, found a Shaco, then went to fight Lilith, uh, not knowing she one-shots. He quit playing. Yeah, uh, if you can't outgear something and you your gear doesn't effectively matter, then why are you getting it? So, yeah, I, I did see people talking about this, and uh, I think that really, like, removing the thrash mechanic is something that I think Blizzard should do across the board. I don't see any purpose or value for a mechanic like that to exist in the game. And I think that they should just rebalance the bosses to have more interesting counterplay and more interesting abilities to do for tanks, or just make them do more damage. Uh, having random RNG deaths on a tank because of something that you can't predict or control, 
doesn't really seem like a very good time. Especially whenever people are going in there with, like, full consumables and, like, everything and just, like, lose all that for some bullshit. It, it just sucks, right? And it's like, why, why have something like this whenever you don't have to have it? So, anyway, Acranius got nerfed. And it got nerfed by... They literally took the health and they reduced it by over a million. And then... Then... They cut it in half. It was at 2.7, now it's at 1.4. That's a lot. And I think that it'll happen again. I think they're going to have to nerf it again because I don't. I still don't think the average player can do it. Guys, I really don't think that you understand how bad the average player is. I think that they. Ha I think they're going to have to do it again. How did they miss the mark by this much? It's so interesting. Well, I said it before. I'll say it again. I think the reason why this happened is extremely simple. It's just because they rushed out the patch and they didn't test it. That's literally it. There's no other reason. There's not anything else going on that. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't someone who makes the raid tr not try it? Because they didn't have the time to do it. And also, I want you guys to keep in mind that the way this boss is spawning ads, this is an exploit. They exploited this boss to kill it. The Nightmare Whelplings are not supposed to spawn underneath Acranius. This is not the way the, the fight's supposed to work. So, like, even the world first kill... Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, they're not supposed to spawn underneath him like that. Uh, the reason why it's happening is because he's at a different level of elevation, so it defaults to that location because his only available locations are from here to here. So that's what happens. Did you end up clearing? Yeah. And so that's a big factor. It's like if you've got people exploiting the game, because, like, I also think they should fix things like this because this is an exploit. And fighting the boss on this weird scuffed corner here is really bad gameplay. So they should, again, make the, make the whelps have less health and then make it to where they always spawn in different places. So yeah, using walls to influence ad spawns is pretty common in WoW. It is common, but this is clearly an exploit. It is. Because they're, they're, they're causing a unintended consequence that makes the fight easier. That's an exploit, man. It's that simple. I'd like to also refer back to um, yesterday when people were adamantly disagreeing with me that it wasn't going to get nerfed and people just need to get good. Oh, man. That's crazy. That's just crazy. Wow.